Welcome to the College Football Bros Podcast. I am Michael Newman, and I'm joined by the brother who unfortunately overestimated Nebraska's win total. It happened again. That's me, <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> and by the other brother who is impossible to overestimate. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me, Trey Newman. All right. On today's episode, we're going to go over some of our worst takes and predictions uh, leading up to the 2020 season. We'll also uh, put some media members on the chopping blocks. We found uh, some some great past tweets and, and comments from from writers. Actually, I say we found them. We went to Old Takes Exposed Twitter account and uh, found some of the best ones. And we've also got some some takes from the fourth bros you shared on Instagram your worst predictions before the 2020 season. So we'll we'll read those as well. Uh, before we get into it, though, we've got a, a quick word from our sponsor. Yes, we do. Um, our sponsor today is uh, myfrontpagestory.com. Um, it's a it's a wonderful um, business model that they have here. So essentially, what they what you do here, what they offer is you will speak to a writer that they have, and this writer of theirs will essentially write a, a news article, kind of like what you, like a story about the and they would put it on the front page of like a newspaper. So you talk to that writer for about fifteen minutes, tell them whatever you want. It could be about your your significant other, it could be about your mom, your dad, grandparents, especially significant other. We got Valentine's Day coming up. Yeah, Valentine's Day coming up is the is the main thing that you might want to use this one for. So yeah, they you talk to them for fifteen minutes. They'll write a great story about um, whoever it is that you decided to write it about. Um, you give it to them. It comes in like it looks like just like on the front of page of a newspaper. Uh, it's a really unique gift. It's something that's special. Um, and the person receiving it, of course, uh, thinks like. Hey, this is a big deal. This is obviously one that you put a lot of thought into, which is true. You did. Um, and it's just a, kind of an emotional moment, maybe for some of them. Uh, they get some, maybe get some happy tears in there. Um, it's a great it's a great thing. It's a great gift. It's much better than you're, you know, just getting a box of chocolates, maybe and a, some flowers. Get a little creative here. This is a way to go. So my front page start my front page story dot com. Use the promo code bros 15 um, to get 15 percent off uh, of your order. So once again, that's my front page story dot com promo code bros 15 all right and you have used the product before you you got a, a story written about your wife doing it for v-day actually oh i'm sorry okay i thought you already did it. yeah no we i was talking with one of the writers and he was like hey let's i, I kind of suggested him hey let's just do it for v-day that'd be perfect so he's like yep even better so there you sweet. go yeah awesome uh, okay, let's uh, let's get to some takes right now, and we'll start with two that involved all three of us uh, that I've got. So we were asked by Kentucky.com writer John Clay um, to give our prediction as to whether or not there would be a college football season. Uh, do you guys? I almost forgot about this, but uh, Man, I had to have said no. I had to have said no. Yeah, I think we, we had were to bring a little it up. more pessimistic. Yeah. It, well, it was. 7th that we gave this opinion so it was like when was it i'm sorry april 7th oh yeah right oh yeah the no, right. onslaught NBA wasn't even going yet nba what? hadn't even gone back to it no, i don't yeah. think anything was going i think yeah, yeah i want to say it was, was yeah, we were period. very shut down at that time uh so there's our excuse but here's what we yeah. said we said quote because the experts say a vaccine is at least a year away it is Man. difficult to envision thousands of people gathering in stadiums around the country this fall even in empty stadiums, the players slash coaches could be at risk. End quote. I mean, for for yeah. a few months, that was not a ridiculous statement. So no, no, it almost no, it, it was looking good. Uh, I mean, not good for you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know what I mean. But that yeah, is we, one that I am so glad we were yes. wrong. Yes. Yes. Yep. So there you have it. We were wrong. Uh, and then the other one we had was a Patreon. Heisman draft a few weeks into the season and went around drafting players and the goal of, was of course to to draft the eventual Heisman winner did I don't think we even brought up the name Devonte Smith um, we did Ooh. draft Jalen Waddle uh, who which is kind of funny to think because yeah he had a, a better a better start to the season but uh, obviously Devonte Smith ended up winning hey we knew an Alabama receiver was getting it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, Trey. Now it is your turn. So we're going to get to some. We'll have four bad takes from you. But because we're nice, we let you start out with two good ones. I appreciate it. You know, um, so people are going to say this first one was so easy 
but that's in hindsight. LSU, their over under was seven, and the favorite was m- over by a, a good margin. So it wasn't that easy. Roll it. I mean, even before the COVID opt outs of Jamar yeah. Chase and Tyler Shelvin, they lost a ton. It's been well documented from, from last year's title team. They lose the uh, co offensive coordinator, Joe Brady. Dave Aranda has gone to Baylor, the defensive coordinator. I mean, that is a lot of turnover to be really good again. I know that they've recruited very well, but that's a lot to ask. Miles Brennan at quarterback, thinking he'll be able to take a giant leap similar to Burrow is just totally unrealistic. Uh, Defensively, they bring back Bo Pelini, defensive coordinator. It's going to be a tall task (laughs) for him this year um, back in the Bayou. But for me overall, I just don't see them getting to eight wins to beat me. I I just think they fall back and go under. Thank you. They ended you up go. going. They ended up going five and five. And you know what's funny though is if you told me before the season they would win in the swamp, I would have yeah. been a little concerned. Yeah, but, no doubt. Yeah. But they, they were not good <laughs> that first half of the year. Mm-mm. No. And uh, and by the way, Ryan saying like, "Oh boy," about yeah, uh, hiring <laughs> that was live or not? No, it was, sorry, that was like that was in the clip. That yeah. Yep. That. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny. yeah, that was questionable about that one. <laughs> yeah, Should use well, that. Uh, but I didn't even go in as hard as I wanted. I just really did not like LSU over yeah, this year. Was, we, I think we were all. Michael, I think we all went under. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. I think I made it a lock. I think Michael did too. Maybe trade it. Yeah, I think. yeah. But uh, yeah. Anyway, so, anyways, I was. I ended up being kind of dialed into the SEC for the most part, as it turns out, because this next one is about Texas A and M, and I. I think I had a good good pulse on them. I'm I'm going over to Ryan. You just touched on it. the SC West is it's kind of up for grabs in that second spot right now, and I think A and M can do it. Even with the opt outs, didn't help. So I think without the opt outs, I'd be all in. I'd probably be <laughs> sneaking them in the playoff or something. I don't know, but um, the offense, you guys really hit on it. Um, just need Spiller to to stay healthy there. The defense. It's funny because A and M hasn't really re- been renowned for being a a strong defensive team really since their wrecking crew defenses uh, back when like RC Slocum was the head coach, they had guys like that win, but, uh, but there, there's just a lot of returning production and I I'm really optimistic on the defensive side of the ball. And even if the offense isn't living up to the full potential, I have confidence that the defense has uh, improved enough to at least get them over the, over the hump yeah. this year. Yeah. So their over under was around seven. Easily went over that. Oh, yeah. I said they'd have a top fifteen defense, finished thirteenth. So I, I was, I was confident in Jimbo's boys this year. Yeah, they almost did make the playoff. Yeah, they almost snuck in. <laughs> okay, uh, that's no fun. Let's let's get to your bad takes. All right, yeah, here we go. Get to this next clip. Oh yeah, sorry, that's me. Oh, you're gonna introduce it, Ryan? I could just go straight to it. <laughs> well, I should introduce it, shouldn't I? Uh, so this one was uh, a Big Ten one. We're talking about Penn State. Trey was talking about here. Um, it's kind of going over their their season win total, which was set at seven uh, before the year. Obviously, it's not a good loss to have. He's you know probably your best defensive player. He's outstanding, but he is only one guy. It's not like he made the entire defense. I mean, he's obviously a key part. I'm not. Diminishing that. Gross matos, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But true. they they're still they're still a very solid defense. And then on the offensive side, Sean Clifford, he doesn't get a ton of love nationally, but and it does hurt losing a guy like KJ Hamler, who was a weapon for them. Um, but you guys touched on the receivers that he that he still does have and t- he and the offensive line doesn't have many excuses to fit to fall. So I think he can not like make this giant leap, but at least be consistent enough for them to be uh, as well. So I'm also going over and I think they're really balanced on offense and defense. And to me, it just seems difficult uh, for them to, to lose three games for this to go under. Well, yeah, they, when you start, Oh, and five, I don't <laughs> think you're going to go over, nah. but you know, it's funny. I do this thing every off season where if a quarterback doesn't look so great the year before I immediately kind of write them off and and then that quarterback ends up doing well the next year. So I kind of went reverse logic with Clifford because I wasn't overly high on him, but I'm like, he's going to be better because I'm going reverse logic. Yeah, that didn't quite quite what, pat on. What if they? What if Penix was one millimeter shorter? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what then ha- they start one out. They 
they were they finished four and five. They're obviously were played much better than a four and five team, but I don't know if they would have got to seven. It would have been three. It would have been close. It would have been close. Seven. Yeah. And they were competitive uh, against Ohio State. I know they weren't yeah. really in it, but they they hung in there. You know, what was it? Maryland well as... was the first one that was like, "What just happened?" I think that, that was yeah, a head scratcher. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, yeah, not so, yeah, not, not so good. <laughs> seven was yeah, yeah, not in the cards. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Micah Parsons at the beginning of that clip, but uh, let's get to the next one here. So Trey. I'm actually, you know what? I know we had bad ones, but I just had to include this one because you just nailed Tulsa. Let me tell you. Like, I let's. I'm sorry. Let's right on. <laughs> uh huh. To start out with Tulsa here, Philip Montgomery. He needs to have a good season to kind of avoid getting on a on a warm seat next year. Once again, though, they should have a productive offense. Zach Smith threw for over three thousand yards. Shamari Brooks had over a thousand on the ground. The offense will put up points and, and keep them in, in some games. The challenge will be the defense, uh, which tends to be fairly redundant at Tulsa. They only return four starters, and I'm not really expecting to see a ton of strengths there. They they open at Oklahoma State this upcoming weekend. Tough game, but uh, we'll we'll be able to see what they if some of that offensive firepower see what it can do. Completely <laughs> wrong. So Man, that Tulsa offense just crushed it, and that defense. Hmm. Ugh. Yeah, so it turns out their <laughs> offense wasn't a strength this year. And then, you know, after not saying or not expecting many strengths on their defense, their linebacker, Zayvon Collins, goes and wins the dang Bronco Nagurski Award and was a beast. Like, Tulsa nearly wins the AAC. Wow, I mean, yikes. Yikes. Uh, not a good I mean, look. It, it was reasonable at the time, but uh, yeah, it was. Didn't, didn't turn out well. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well... This next one here, we're going to the, an ACC team, Florida State. Uh, the win total was at a seven, so yeah, this was an interesting call here, Trey. Yeah, Tomahawk. Trey, what do you think? You on board? Oh, he's doing the Tomahawk chop. I guess that means he's on board. <laughs> I'm going over. You know, I know the casual fan has seen Florida State just look like crap the last couple seasons but i'm leaning towards a bounce back this year uh they bring in a new coach of obviously from memphis norvell he brings some credibility to the Knolls, in my opinion and he's inheriting a, a team with 17 returning starters i like blackman at quarterback uh i just felt he hasn't been in the best position to succeed he's there's been so much turnover i know there's turnover this year but norvell knows how to maximize offensive talent we saw him do it at memphis and I believe it's going to be just a totally different look and feel to this Florida State team this year. It was I not. mean, it, it was literally <laughs> everything the opposite of what I said. <laughs> they they finished with three wins over under, I think it was seven, yeah. um, 85th in SP plus. And, and they also, they beat North Carolina. One of those three wins mystifying, but yeah, everything I said was pretty much wrong. It was shocking how bad they were. Yeah, no one saw that coming. I I was a little I thought I thought Norvell and the Seminoles were sitting on a a good one. It is kind of interesting how we uh evaluate teams like this after the fact. Like I think there will be like, yeah, Florida State struggled last year. They were expected to, you know, as first year Norvell, new 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 team. But we said it. Their season win total was 7. Like they're expected yeah. to be pretty good. Oh, yeah, total what a disaster. What a disaster. Happen? Uh, okay, last one for you, Trey, mercifully. Uh, you were maybe a, a bit too much of a, a believer in David Cutcliffe. Over under five wins. I'm actually going to go over. Um, yeah, no, I know that's the... wrong. That's wrong. Oh, wow. Yeah, six. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> no, I, know, I know the offense has been poor the last couple years, uh, and they had a lack of a solid running game. But they still, even last year, went five and seven with how bad it was. I see improvement and a little bit better season. So I think the offense will at least be more competent this year with with Chase Bryce, and hopefully he, Chase Bryce is the guy that can help to get that uh, that offense where where it should be under Cutcliffe. And then, like you, you kind of laid out the defense. I'm a little more encouraged with the defense and hoping the offense. And I'm going over. They ended up going two and nine which mm. is under five in my I don't opinion. don't think so i mean i knew chase bryce wasn't great but man was he dreadful they were 114th in sp plus offense <laughs> and Oof. i mean the defense rumpf was was good on the d line but they still were nothing 
impressive on that side of the ball. Uh, what a disaster. I mean, it might be getting away from Cutcliffe at Duke. I mean, I know it's hard to win, but that wasn't a yeah. good year at all for, for any hope. If they don't make us take a step forward this year, it starts to get time to the like. Trading I don't think up. they'll fire him. It'll be a kind of mutual, you know, quote yeah, mutual. I I agree. Agree. Maybe he'll bounce back. You never know. I mean, I hope so. But that was pretty looking pretty bleak. All right, Ryan. Yeah. Oh, is, thank goodness. Thank your goodness. Turn. I didn't have yeah, any good bad job, takes Ray. Good work. Uh, what'd you say, Ryan? I said thank goodness I didn't have any bad takes this year. <laughs> oh wow, it's amazing. Yeah, only good Oof. takes. So, uh, what's 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 your first good take, Ryan? Uh, my first one here. We were talking about uh, the Big Ten uh, and our Big Ten West particular here. Um, just kind of had a little hunch uh, about a certain team. I'm gonna go Northwestern. Uh, obviously, they went one and eight in conference last year. I think they can do a lot better than that. And if things go right with Peyton Ramsey, he does kind of come in. It's like, wow, he's certainly a lot better than they had uh, last year. It's gonna help that offense, and this will be solid. Um, I think they're good enough to get to five games. Like it's possible. Uh, I don't think they will, but I could see them go into, you know, three, possibly four, you know, it's not unrealistic. Remember two years ago, they were in the conference title game. So um, Pat Fitzgerald sometimes knows how to work magic. So I'll say them as far as biggest jump. Even yes, I underestimated them. The, the question that, yeah, the question there was who's going to take the biggest jump in, ter- right. in terms of wins in the, the big 10. Northwestern. There we go. Uh, okay. What's next, Ryan? Uh, the next one here. So this, uh, after the end of every episode, we kind of do our, uh, upset specials. And, uh, this one, I just had a gut feeling on. I'm gonna take a little bit of a long shot, a real long shot. I'm gonna go with Mississippi state Bulldogs here. Ooh, um, okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Kind of like, uh, Trey mentioned in our, our preview episode, I think Leach is likely to going up to upset somebody this year. He's kind of, you know, capable of doing that with that tough style of offense. So why not here against a team that's replacing their team? Uh, so <laughs> yeah, at LSU. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Mississippi state 16 and a half point dog. They can, they can, maybe they can do it. Listen to me providing context in that clip Ooh. back there. Like, Man. Ryan, yeah. you haven't said who they're playing yet. At LSU. At LSU. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 16 and a half points. That's a pretty darn good one. That is a big spread, 16 and a half. That, was that our biggest upset special prediction of the year? Probably. I think so. Yeah. It could have. No. Yeah. It Darn seemed like at the time of that happening, though, it seemed like an even bigger upset. It did, yeah. Yeah. yeah in hindsight, yeah. not yeah. as big, but. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's get to your bad clips. This is a lot more fun. So uh, you see here. Uh, oh, you were giving your thoughts in our ACC preview on uh, Boston College. Uh, the over-under was set at four. So, yeah, I, but I'm just, I don't see, even with Djokovic, I'm not, I'm not uh, banking on it. They lose AJ, AJ Dillon. But let me just get the defense, how horrible that was last year. Dead last <laughs> <laughs> Dead last in the ACC, 125th in total defense. T- teams just did whatever they wanted to them. Kansas put 48 on them. Kansas put 48 on them. So they lose some key pieces, a new system. I, I just come on. I don't. I don't. I'm not seeing it from BC. This is going to take take some time for for uh, Halfley to get that uh, turned around. I like throwing a little like, come on, come on, <laughs> come on, come on, guys. I mean, well, yeah. BC ended up going over the four. They went uh, six and five. They were pretty much the same as they've been. <laughs> yeah, you were wrong. <laughs> so moving on to the SEC in our SEC preview, we were talking about the new hires. Didn't like Drinkowitz. Didn't like Pittman. Didn't like Kiffin. Ryan liked someone else. Yeah, it's it's a fact. I would just, yeah, at this point of his career, I'd just be surprised if it didn't go at least decent uh, there. Like, he's proven to, that he can have success at two really tough s- spots. Lubbock, Texas at Texas Tech, and Washington State, which was in an absolute dumpster fire when he got there. So if you can have success there, those two places, like, really good success, not just like, okay, we're making bowl games, but like, you know, winning 10 double-digit games, um, 
then I think you can do that at Mississippi State. So you were asked there what who would be the who's the best hire in the SEC. And it's only been one year in your defense. I mean, that's yeah, I'm not writing them off. Going. Hey, after yeah. week one, it looked real good. My upset hit. <laughs> Man, there were a lot of takes after week one oh. that could be in this episode after oh. Mississippi State lit it up like Leach's offense is just going to dominate in the SEC. Costello and could win the Heisman and oh, yeah. sword, mm-hmm. swing your sword. It was crazy. Michigan's back. Their offense is legit. Oh, Joe Milton. Yeah. Yeah. yeah him as well. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Mike Leach, at least this year, did not turn out to be the best hire in the SEC. Yeah. But let's go to uh, your next clip. You were asked whether uh, Arkansas was going to go over or under one and a half wins. I agree. Um, Got to go under. They have a solid quarterback. Uh, you know, Franks isn't, you know, amazing, but he's a solid quarterback. Will- way better than what they've had. And Ricky Boyd is a really good running back. Outside of that, though, not too confident um, in their in their offensive repertoire. So I'm going to go under just asking two wins against – it's going to be two big upsets. Like, you know, they're going to be big yeah. underdogs. And, you know, last year only two of their SEC games were within one score. So they were getting beat down by pretty much all the SEC teams there. So I just can't see them getting to a couple – so going under. They of course went three and seven, and it was a good three and seven. They very yeah. easily could have been five and five. There was no risk of them going under at all. No. Good yeah, call. Good. Thank you. I uh, might have gone under also. So <laughs> but we're not playing that clip right now. So yeah, yeah. I'm okay. Now Ryan is our, of course, resident homer of the podcast with Nebraska, his Nebraska takes. And so in our Big Ten preview, he was high on a certain running back. Yeah, he was asked who would lead the Big Ten in rushing. I'm not going to go with Ohio State. I think Trey Sermon and Master T will probably kind of split up carries a little bit. That's not going to be a lead back like J.K. Dobbins necessarily. Same thing with Penn State. Journey Brown's good, but they got some other deep, talented players that are got to see the field. Uh, Minnesota kind of likes to do that. I know Ibrahim is kind of a leader, but they like to kind of split it up. Elijah Collins, Michigan State, might be the lead back, but the, the offense is going to be bad. So, you know, I was kind of going through, and, you know, believe it or not, I landed on Nebraska's Diedrich Mills. Um, he, he finished eighth. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> I believe that you did. You believe that yeah, I did. Shocking. He finished eighth in the conference in rushing last year. It's not like it's that bad. And then um, he'll no doubt be the lead back. Like Mo Washington is gone. There's tr- freshmen behind him. He is the clear cut guy that's going to get a lot of the carries on a team that should be able to run the ball pretty solid. And that's what happened. He finished, uh, uh, he finished yeah. second on his team in rushing. <laughs> Adrian outran him. Behind the quarterback. Uh, and he was 13th, I believe, in the Big Ten. It, I mean, to your credit, it was a little mystifying how the offense didn't really do that great this year. But uh, especially with Mills, he's a good back. But that was uh, not that your was best off. prediction. And uh, a couple of the guys you mentioned there did finish at the top. Ibrahim was number one. He was the only one that went over 1,000 yards for Minnesota. And uh, Trey Sermon ended up finishing second. Got a late start on it, but... Uh, Made up he, for the last time. two games, he pretty much was the top, he, top guy. Yeah, he had more rushing yards in those last two games than Mills the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did he have in that? Uh, let's see, Mills had 396 yards. How many did uh, Sermon, Sermon go for had, against Northwestern? It, it was, was like it was over 300. I don't remember the number. Yeah. yeah. Not 396, but it was a uh, no. Was okay. Uh, right, my turn. <laughs> it's a little off. I love that you're like, believe it or not, I landed on Dietrich yeah, Mills yeah. from Nebraska. <laughs> we believe it. We yeah. Believe it. Yeah, yeah. All right. My turn. Two good clips for me. Uh, I could have given myself three. I'm in charge of the soundboard here, but mm-hmm. stuck with two. Yeah. I really crammed in some some takes here though. So first one is uh is Iowa State. I was I was pretty high on them. So we've got uh two clips. Back to back here. Uh, next one. Call me crazy, but I think Iowa State will beat Oklahoma in week two of Big 12 play. And I'll, I'll make my case here. So they get them at home, and it's early in the seasons. OU's new receivers and even Spencer Rattler maybe still kind of working out the kinks. 
And we'll get to this, but OU has some important players uh, missing potentially the, the first five games of the season. So right. I think uh, Iowa State can take Stop. them down. I'm with you. I'm extremely high on, on Iowa State. Um, yeah, yeah, over on Iowa State, and I'm actually going to make that my lock. Well done. Bravo. Thank you. Go Thank Cyclones. You. I got a lot of crap after they lost to Louisiana. Louisiana. <laughs> Everyone was ragging on you. Yeah, they were. I had some I had some doubts at that point, but uh worked out. Didn't hear him chirping anymore. No. Uh okay. Let's see. Next. My next good calls came in our betting preview episode, which was actually a, a YouTube only episode. So nice little plug there. Go to youtube.com slash college football bros and subscribe. We're trying to build our subscriber count there. Uh, but I recommended uh, three bets there. Well, I recommended four, but I left out one of them because it wasn't as good. <laughs> yeah, he's one of my two value picks. As you can see here, I got Mac Jones 25 to one as well. I mean, just the the supporting cast is so good around him um, that he's going to put up huge numbers. So there's there's risks, like you said, with Bryce Jones or Bryce, um, Bryce Young yeah. taking over. Um, or or maybe even Najee Harris stealing votes, but that's why he's 25 to one and not 10 to one. So I, I'm willing to take those risks. Okay. Uh, for my conference championship pick, I'm going OU at even money plus 100. And then uh, my national championship is Alabama plus 400. So there you go. Yeah. I mean, the Mac Jones 25 to one to win the Heisman, he didn't win, but had if you bet that, hopefully you had a chance to to uh hedge at the end exactly last few weeks he wasn't near 25 to one mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. um okay there's nicely my good done, takes. nicely done thank you okay bad ones yes and we're gonna start in the big 10 michael made a bold prediction on purdue and let's see how that turned out for him in there in the end Purdue is going to win its last five games of the season. So actually make it six. I'll include that, uh, you know, game against the team from the East. So you got, uh, you know, maybe it'll take a few games for them to settle in at quarterback. They could play multiple quarterbacks. We'll see. Bob Diaco has got to install that defense. But last five games of the season, they got Northwestern, at Minnesota, Rutgers, Nebraska, and at Indiana. Hmm. Well, hmm. on the season, they won two games. So if I carry the one yeah. don't think they won yeah. their last five <laughs> no they actually lost their last four so <laughs> that's not great i had to throw in six i'm like yeah they I, i'm going to bold prediction i i said oh they'll win their last five games why not six like why <laughs> not have to six? let it ride they're gonna win the conference uh, title too yeah uh, not good hey. I'm, i've been a believer in brahm and you know i still think he's a good coach i, I do, I but, do. It, yeah. but it's waning uh, yeah it is yeah, he's he's had a tough tough hand. Uh, his his defensive coordinator hire this past year was a little questionable. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, moving on. Uh. So the, we were previewing the Pac-12 here. Uh. And Michael, he liked Arizona. He was uh. You know, he definitely liked those Wildcats, and their win total was set at one for the, for the season. So the offense is going to need to carry them, and. I think it's capable of winning them uh, a couple games. Grant Gannell is is kind of the hope as a true freshman last year, albeit a limited sample, but he was 65% completions, nine touchdowns, one interception. And he gets his top three receivers back, all the offensive line with everybody back healthy this year. They've got a, yeah. a good group of running backs. Like I, I think the offense has a chance to be pretty good if, if Grant Gannell is the real deal. So I'm going to believe in that. I'm going to go over. I'm going to say they get two wins, and I'm going to make that my lock. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, goose egg there. <laughs> Didn't get a single they had zero win. They almost had your Trojans. <laughs> yeah, I know. Drew. I thought it was going to be like, you know, a push at worst. They can get one win. Come yeah, on. Yeah, one win. That is pretty astounding. They couldn't. And, uh, yeah, I actually picked my upset special that week was, was Arizona to beat USC. So that... They Club. had him on the ropes. Wrong. Joke. It was all downhill from there. Uh, so in the summertime, we had an Ask the Bros episode, and we were talking about the coaching carousel, and Michael had 
some not so nice things to say about a certain someone. Yeah, I was asked about the worst hire of the the coaching carousel. Okay, well, what about our boy Sam Pittman? How, how, where does he factor? I'm gonna into stay this? away because I don't want. I'm scared of. <laughs> I'm scared Arkansas of the hogs. Fans? Oh wow, yeah, Ryan! I'm I'm, he was he was Ryan near the bottom for he me. He was in the running. He was in the yeah, running, no doubt. Just because he doesn't have the resume that would get you excited, you know, for a a big yep. time job in the SEC. Mm-hmm. Like again, if if it, if Pittman, even if he was hired by let's say Colorado State, like if they announced that hire, I don't think everyone around the country would be like, "Holy crap, that's a home run!" It would be like, "Yeah, okay, we'll we'll see how that goes." Oops. <laughs> I mean, to your credit, I I didn't see it coming, and I yeah, you know, jury's still out, but he was he did very well. Yeah. yeah, and and to my credit, I did you know I'm trying to I'm selectively editing these clips to make them even look worse for you guys. Um, not that there was anything great, but afterwards that we did, I did acknowledge I love the staff around him, but uh, yes. yeah, yeah, still saying it was the worst hire of the coaching carousel was uh, was bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, you weren't alone. Um, all right, this final one here. Well, I mean, there was a lot more to choose from, but we had just had to stop it at four. Um, <laughs> big, this was a <laughs> this was a, a Big Ten preview, and Michael was talking about Rutgers here. So uh, let's go ahead and see what he said. I'm excited about the future with Shiano. He's he's recruiting pretty well, much better than they have been. So, yep, I think there's there's definitely hope. Uh, and again, this is. Like uh, Mel Tucker at Michigan State, definitely uh, you get a year zero. You might get two year zeros if you're. This might be your double zero yeah. for for Shiano. There's some hope for the future, but I'm going under. Yeah, three and six would be a minor miracle. Oh, miracles <laughs> happen! Miracles oh. happen! Oh wow. my god! Go exactly Come three on. and six. <laughs> what a world! What a time to be alive! Yeah, and actually, after that clip, I. Uh, Ryan, you, your response there. So I, I was like, I'm going under two wins for Rutgers. Would be a minor miracle to get to three and six. And your response, Ryan, was, well, sometimes miracles happen. I'm going over. <laughs> should have so, left that in there. <laughs> wow. I know. I should have. I don't know. I didn't. Though. It makes you look good. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't want to do that. I don't but want to do that. Did. Uh, anyway. Uh, okay. There you have it. There's our old takes being exposed. Um that's fun to do every year. Like we got to do it. I, we got to keep doing it. I mean, that. it's kind of, you know, I got to be a little more, this year was kind of weird with the prep for the, for mm-hmm. going into the year. It wasn't like just week after week doing our normal preps. Okay. I have big SEC this week, ACC. And it's so organized. This, it was like a mix match. And I was like, it's harder to locate my, uh, my bad takes. It felt like this year. Yeah, it was, it was haphazard for sure. Previous season, but yeah, next year is going to be normal be boom 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 it'll be nice it's, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna double our listenership next year i can feel it boom. uh all right let's get to some from from just public figures blue check marks coaches uh and and again shout out to old takes exposed their twitter account for it's a good, good uh, it's definitely a good follow 100 percent. It, it is so should i lead us off yeah go for it all right, so first one is from Joel Klatt. He's known to have some hot takes, not always bad, and he was on Colin Cowherd, who's known to have plenty of his own. Yeah, I don't have the clip, so it feels like you're introducing the clip. Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't have the clip. that's all right. Well, his basically his quote was, Alabama has a Nick Saban problem. And it's like, no matter the context of of what you think about what he's trying to say it's it's just wrong like there is no nick saban problem like nick saban is the savior god and everything around nick saban (laughs) turns to gold at alabama so no yeah and this was 2015 i think that he said it i don't know if you mentioned that but uh yeah i mean but still like you look back at alabama's history they're losing like one game tops every year okay so maybe sometimes they lose two but like I don't, there was never a time in the past five years where I was like, ooh, Nick Saban. It's like, it, it was definitely a crazy conversation to to have. And uh, Not good, Joel. Every no. time Alabama wins a national title, it looks even worse. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll carry on. So this was more recent. Texas Athletic Director Chris, Chris Del Conte had a statement in early December. With the close of the regular season, I want to reiterate that Tom Herman 
is our coach. <laughs> didn't didn't age well. No, didn't that uh, not a good look. Not a good look. No, no. Uh, a little bit later in December, Stuart Mandel, December nineteenth, he tweeted. At this point, my suggestion to the committee would be just to skip ahead to the inevitable Alabama Clemson title game. Ooh. Don't think that happened. Really? That, that's just too strong for like yeah. right? Ohio State. It's still Ohio State. Yeah. Like I didn't. It was a seven point win. underdog or something. It's not like yeah. We're, yeah, I yeah. mean, we of course it was favored, but it didn't happen. Tank Carter tweeted, in, instead of voting who will win the Ohio State versus Clemson game, let's vote how much Ohio State will lose by. He says by more than 30 points. Wow. <laughs> so, well, they won by, points. They almost won by 30. <laughs> that is crazy. Uh, then, of course, probably the most talked about one recently, Dabo Sweeney voting Ohio State 11th in the coaches poll. <laughs> That that didn't work out in his favor. Oh. Yeah, no, no good. good. That certainly bit him in the butt. Yeah, Alex Kirshner tweeted during the Peach Bowl. I thought Cincinnati might win, but they are just bullying these guys. I love the immediate overreaction in games. Yeah. Like you know, it's like ten nothing. Like oh, this game's over. Oh, they're getting dominated. Like, and sometimes, like I get it. I I always do it. It is annoying to have to be like so far. You know, like yeah. They're bullying them so far, but it could turn around, which, of course, he was just saying what he was seeing, I guess, in his defense. But uh, but yeah, yeah, we've all been we've all been guilty of making those quick judgments, but I've learned lessons enough to not jump to conclusions too early anymore. Yeah, because actually going into this next one, you got midway through the Wisconsin Wake Forest Bowl game, the the Mayo Bowl. Ian Kenyon tweeted, Wisconsin football has an apps has been an absolute train wreck this year. And Dave Clawson is money when given time to prep for an opponent. I am not at all surprised by this. That was when Wake was was handling Wisconsin. And, of course, Wisconsin ended up dominating the rest of that game and, and winning that. So not so great, Ian. Okay, no. I've got a good one here from Aaron Torres in October. He said, this one is so good. So, quote, never forget. A few years ago, Tennessee fans were ridiculed for refusing to let their administration hire Greg Schiato and demanding better for their football program. Three years later, they now have the longest win streak in Power Five. Funny how this stuff works, huh? (laughs) (laughs) It's such a snide comment. And also, like, even at the time, like, sure, you, you were probably like that win streak for Tennessee was good and there was some optimism, but it wasn't like, all right. Pruitt's set. We know he's good. You SEC know, was, East. Here we go. Yeah, it was, it was a not, not great wins, of course, a very light schedule, but uh, it did turn out worse than, than we all could have thought after. I think they started 2-0 and this year and lost like 7 of 8 or whatever it was. Yeah, so uh, didn't okay. turn out well. Okay. Uh, before the ACC title, uh, PFF's Mike Renner said that the 10.5 point spread is an absurd line and that Notre Dame will cover with ease. I love the gambling hot hot take guys. Yeah. Anytime no no point spread like in a college football market or NFL is absurd. Like it, yeah, it, it no. just doesn't happen. Like it might end up being way off in hindsight, but but there's no such thing as easy no. money there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pac-12 writer John Wilner tweeted, quote, the best matchup in the Pac-12 title game would be a rematch of USC UCLA. They are the best teams. Trojans will smoke the North rep. Mm. I I don't know what gave him the impression that you would have confidence in USC anybody yeah. like they barely beat Arizona they barely beat ASU barely beat UCLA like why would he have been so confident in that they looked good once right against Wazoo like the first half right or something yeah yeah, yeah. But that was like the only yeah but, uh, true yeah anyway all yeah. right next one on August 7th someone tweeted must champ is toast and Dan Wolken replied to it saying, nobody is getting fired this year. <laughs> really? Well, you're about to get fired, Dan. Uh, oh, okay. That's harsh. Uh, <laughs> Ch- Chicago writer Dave Wisnowski tweeted on November 9th, 2019. Who wants to fire Lovey now? <laughs> all you impatient haters owe this program a huge, all caps, huge apology. You owe us <laughs> apology, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Didn't work out for Lovey Smith after that. Uh, my final one here, Joey Galloway and Jesse Palmer were asked to pick the LSU Florida game on ESPN. 
and uh, they basically just started laughing. <laughs> yeah, like the pick. <laughs> yeah, and I remember uh, watching that. LSU upset them. They sure did. And the fall. a shoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, here I'll start with the first one here uh, from Jimba Brazili. 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 Yeah, I think so. Uh, on yeah. Twitter. Uh, he says, Arizona State could have had someone, but for some strange reason, hired Herm Edwards. Now someone is going to Zona. Uh, and then in the Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman voice, kind of a little gift there. Uh, big mistake. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. I I thought so, too. I'm on board with that. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah, I thought it at the time. This was obviously a few years ago. I, I would have. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Herm was weird. You know, definitely a weird one. That was... <laughs> Knocked off my thingamajig. All right, here we go. Uh, next one was from Clay Travis. He tweeted in August, Gators at Vols on December 6th. Vols going 8-2. and two. This is our year. Fired up. Mm, didn't yeah. Didn't go too well for you, Clay. <laughs> no, oh, that's rough. Sorry. Sorry, Vol fans. We feel you. We feel you. Um, all right, from Steve DC. Uh, he tweeted um, about Iowa State. In 2015, frankly, I'd keep Paul Rhodes before I'd hired the Toledo coach. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Campbell, he's been okay, I guess. I mean, yeah, Campbell's done fine. <laughs> Paul Rhodes, uh, what was he, the Arizona D coordinator, right? I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, UCLA last year. Yeah. It's bouncing around. Rough guy. Not doing well. All right. So, Pat Forty, um, he's had some stronger takes lately. Uh, yes dislike yeah pat 40 during the iowa state texas game tweeted texas is up 10 nothing and it feels like 100 to nothing iowa state completely outmanned up front thus far <laughs> so there's, there you there, go there's the 10 nothing like just shush, shush man and of course iowa state ended up winning yes yes of course uh all right thor nystrom uh tweeted in late october Joe Milton is the first time offseason hype around a Michigan quarterback has been justified. The kid is a star. <laughs> oh, and I love like he not only said the kid is a star, he he pressed enter twice so that it was all by itself. The kid is a star. Just oh, <laughs> tried to emphasize it there. Not great. Oh, man, that's tough. Uh, all right. Next one from Dave Portnoy. Uh, and he, he wrote um, Joe Milton had the greater than sign uh justin fields yeah yeah michigan homer and it didn't work well <laughs> show him on give me a break all right and uh finally the last one here is uh from tim brando uh, a couple years back in 2018 on the paul feinbaum show um scott frost is built for oh <laughs> yeah scott frost is built for success and i'm going to tell you he will win multiple national titles at nebraska he will be competing for a Big Ten title within three years, and he could be the next generation's Nick Saban. Wait, tell me what's wrong, except for the Big man, Ten. Brando, why did you have to? Oh man, wow, that's that rough. Is. I mean, he. Everyone was optimistic about Scott Frost, but that is uh, taking it to another level. Multiple was, national titles. <laughs> yeah, I would have. Yeah. I thought he was going to be really successful, and I would have had to think about whether he'd make a playoff. Like, I, I yeah, we had that conversation. I think I said no, but it was like I really thought about it. Yeah, yeah. win a national title, win multiple. No. Uh, that was that's a pipe dream, even at at the time. Yeah, yeah, never, no. never going to happen. All right. Well, there you have it for for the media. Uh, We're, uh, you know, nobody's perfect. No, except for us sometimes. It's a sports world, man. Everybody makes mistakes. Fourth bros are not perfect either, Trey. No. And I got to lead off with the real sugar Shane. He predicted Texas would make the playoff. Didn't didn't pan out. No, didn't say. Andrew Andrew thought Coastal Carolina would be lucky to get to a bowl game. They have the same. Yeah. They, of course, practically should have won that bowl game, but they had a remarkable, un, almost unbeaten season. Carter Glenn Pilster thought LSU would beat Mississippi State and Missouri. Ended up losing both, of course. And this is yeah, probably was rough. Yeah. Fourth down at the goal. The one <laughs> that was tough. This is probably the worst take in the entire episode of the year. Todd. Mm. 
thought Michael was knowledgeable in college football. Todd was um, certainly on a little something at that particular yeah. moment. Stop drinking, <laughs> Todd. <laughs> I mean, it's Todd. Yeah, it was. Uh, that's not a good call. No. Uh, <laughs> potentially a worse call. I think this one's worse. Roshni thought that 2020 was going to be a great year. <laughs> yeah, I'll give oh, you that. That's not good. Mm. Uh, sorry, Roshni. Uh, sorry, world, I guess, for 2020. Ugh. Lee Kuzmish thought that the committee would consider a non-Power 5 team in a crazy season like this. They, they didn't even really. Work. They considered yeah. not doing that. Yeah. 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 Brody thought Ohio State would not make the playoff with six games. They did. It's pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Austin thought Mac Jones would only start two games. It's a rough off season for a for a freshman quarterback, I guess, to to get a start. Yeah, yeah, and Bryce Young will be uh, probably a stud this year, though. So he will. Um. All right, moving on here. So my first one was Chad said that Minnesota would win the Big Ten West and go to a New Year's Six Bowl. Mm. Yeah, no, there was a they were due for a regression. So yeah. Uh, let's Fair see. BB, BB Fumble 13 predicted Oklahoma State would make it to Jerry World. Ah. No, nah, I mean, they were, you know, close, but they had yeah. moments. Yeah, bit. they had moments. Yep, yep. Uh, all right. Kenny thought LSU would reload and not drop off that much. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, over under with seven. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Uh, and let's see. Dan thought Virginia Tech might not disappoint this season. Uh, Michael thought the Dan, same. Yeah, oh, Michael. I was over Virginia Tech, my lock. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work out. Poor Hokies. Yep. And finally, ooh, yeah, this one, this one stings. Davey thought our brother, Jamie Newman, would win the Heisman. Oh. Mm. Uh, disappointing. We never got to see the, the fourth I know. row of Georgia. A bummer. It's, it's still like, hmm. Stinker could have been a <laughs> right. He's always I'm been a stinker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for sending those in, uh, being vulnerable with us, uh, and that'll do it for the College Football Bros podcast. If you like the show, be sure to follow us on social media at CFB Bros. Every once in a while, we'll we'll go to Instagram and ask for uh, things like that that we read on the show. Um, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm going to keep bringing that up till we get to a thousand subscribers, damn it. Sorry for swearing. <laughs> and we will talk to you next week. You've been watching the College Football Bros. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and in your podcast app for college football content all year round. For bonus episodes and access to our Discord chat, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash college football bros. Thanks for watching.